Hey everyone, I'd like to show you some proposed improvements to our joystick code that I've been working on for BZ Flag. And I don't know how many of you have used BZ Flag with a joystick. Uh, I would guess not many, based on some of the issues we had with it. Uh, some of those were, um, it, it would scale the input based on the mouse box size and like your screen resolution. So, uh, in fact, if you had a widescreen display, then your side-to-side uh, -side joystick readings would be different from your up and down reading. So it was really not ideal uh, in several ways. So uh, hopefully we'll have some improvements on that. I'd like to show you a few new features. So in the input settings menu you're going to see a few different options. And I'm going to jump around a little bit here. Let me start by showing you this text, a test joystick range. This is just a handy visual to show you the movement of your joystick and the settings on the previous menu are going to um, have an impact on this. You're going to see that white cross that is the raw joystick reading from uh, from your device and then over it you see a gray diamond and that is going to be the modified value actually going into the game itself into your movement. So uh, I'll show you how a few of the options in the previous menu are going to uh, cause those two to, to diverge. You see they're moving in concert right now, but that will not always be the case. So we have had a, an, an option to invert uh, an axis for some time. I removed that option as its own independent thing, and I just rolled that into the uh, list of axes here. Uh, my joystick is a Steel Series Nimbus, and the x-axis on the left stick is uh, zero, and the y-axis on the left stick is one, but it's actually backwards. So I just inverted that, and uh, so you can scroll through your list of uh, axes here and select whichever value is appropriate for your particular device. Uh, no changes as far as supported devices, uh, so you should should be good as far as that goes. Um, now, an issue with uh, sticks is that uh, sometimes there's a, a drift, or say you let go of the stick and it's not fully centered. So this value is basically a uh, threshold um, within which the joystick will not actually be sending input into the game. So let me show you like the worst case scenario. Uh, at 20% dead zone, the actual uh, value going to the game is not going to uh, not going to begin until you hit whatever that uh, percentage is that that you set. Now you'll notice it doesn't just snap. The diamond doesn't just snap to the cross when you hit that threshold. It's uh, it smoothly begins to catch up, and then when you hit the edge of the range, then uh, the two are in concert again. And so that's definitely a uh, quality of life improvement over just simply snapping it. I believe that's called scaled radial dead zones or something like that. Uh, so again, 20% is, uh, <laughs> that would be an extreme case. For my particular device, I found about 4% is, uh, is good. And you can see just a little bit of, of movement before the game actually starts getting that that data. Uh, so the uh, issue that this solves is if you have a joystick connected but you want to play with your mouse or your keyboard for a second, if the game is reading input values from your joystick then if you have your uh, input device set to auto then those devices are going to be fighting basically over the input. So this just allows you to set that little uh, tolerance. I'll turn that off for the remainder of this demo, but uh, I'm going to set that back to 4% for my personal device. Okay, joystick range limit. This is going to be basically your sensitivity setting for your stick. So right here we have uh, a one-to-one -one, um, movement between the raw input and the value going into the game. And many people may want to, want to uh, use that. Uh, however, some people might prefer uh, 
slightly more responsive um, movement from the joystick or have uh, re reaching the maximum movement prior to actually hitting the edge of that stick. So you can set this to anything down to I think 25%. So here you see that little black box showing the range is smaller and you're just going to hit that uh, that range limit pretty early on. So that just makes the uh, stick a little more responsive if that's your cup of tea. Now with a stick you're already dealing with less uh, input precision than say a mouse. So this uh, this is the ramp and you can set this to just have the, the one to one um, corresponding movement. But you can also set it to have more precision toward the uh, interior of, of your, your stick. So let me just show you an example of that. Um, if we set this to an exponential ramp, uh, this just squares the input values. And then we go back here and you'll see how the, uh, the cross is an actual movement, but the diamond, which is the value going into the game, is going to offer a bit more precision. So say if there's a, a box right in front of you, you're trying to make a precise jump, this can help with that somewhat, but you're still going to be able to hit those, uh, those extremes. So probably, uh, I would guess, uh, linear or a squared exponential ramp is going to be best for most people. There's a third option f to uh, cube the value. And you'll see there's just quite a bit more precision. Like the input hardly starts moving um, until you move the stick quite a bit. So I don't anticipate many people will use that, um, but certainly being able to accommodate um, different preferences uh, can be useful. I will set that back to linear for now. Now, this option I'm pretty excited about personally with some of the limitations of my device. Um, so your stick may have uh, a square range where you could hit every corner of this box. My particular joystick has uh, not quite a circular range, but it's kind of in between. You can definitely hit the sides, but if you try to make a sweep around the edges, you'll see I can't quite hit the corners for some reason. So that's just the range of this particular uh, device. But uh, this is obviously a disadvantage if you're, say, trying to move fully forward and make a left turn full speed. You, you're not able to do that. You just can't hit that uh, corner with this particular device. So um, one option for uh, fixing that is just reducing your uh, overall range say down to uh, 70% and then you're going to sweep over it a little bit or go, go too far um, at the edges but now you can hit the corners. So that uh, that is an option, works just fine. Um, however, that's going to run into issues where you use one of the exponential ramps because now most of that precision is um, in in the center of the stick, so you're not able to hit those those corners. So we don't even have to to use that method. Let's set this back to 100%. And what then what this option does is it actually stretches the corners. So it takes your circular joystick range or somewhere in the middle, in the case of my device and it basically stretches that input value to be able to cover the full square zone. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, if you are at the edges, uh, there's no difference. However, if you are trying to hit one of those corners, you're going to be able to do that. Let me just make another sweep with my joystick. So you can see 
that just takes the angle and basically stretches it out into that corner. So uh, if you want to turn full speed while also um, moving full speed, then you're going to be able to do that. So this is not going to be necessarily useful for everyone. It is going to depend on what your device is capable of. Uh, however, for those in my position, this uh, will definitely um, improve your ability to uh, hit those corners and, uh, again, hit full speed as well as full rotational speed at the same time. Okay, looks like that's about it. So I'm hoping to commit this to a pull request and I would certainly uh, solicit any uh, feedback or ideas. Thanks.